The History of the Schneider CA-1 French Tank Schneider was a major well-known armament manufacturer in France. It produced guns and ammunition for the Army and Navy, but also had some armor expertise from their shipbuilding activities. Most French battleships had received Schneider sandwich iron plates since the 1880s. It mirrored Vickers Armstrong in Britain, but was not of comparable size. Since the beginning of hostilities, Jean-Baptiste Eugene Estine was fascinated with the idea of armored transports that could bring infantry safely up to the enemy trenches. Born in 1860, he graduated the renowned Polytechnique School and began his career as a military officer, writing a guidance book to correct artillery errors presented to the Academy of Sciences in Paris. He worked on telemetric and pointing gonetric meter devices. Seen as a brilliant pioneering engineer, he was given the development of a newborn aviation militaire, or Air Force, by General Brunn in 1909 in Reims. He worked on several tactical applications and even the first flying artillery concept. During World War I, he was attached to General Petron at the 22nd Artillery Regiment based in Belfort. Although directing a successful air-guided artillery barrage, he nevertheless saw the infantry cut to pieces by machine gun fire. On the 25th of August, he declared in front of his staff and officers, Gentlemen, victory will be owned by the one of any Belgians which could place a 75mm gun on a car able to move on all terrain. He learned during the summer of 1915 that Eugene Brilly was already working on an armored prototype capable of crossing barbed wire, based on a Holt tractor. After gaining the approval of General Jaffe for 400 orders, he gathered a small team in early February to produce the prototype of the CA-1 on the basis of the Schneider chassis, which was ready within two weeks. After successful tests, Schneider began building the infrastructure for mass-producing the CA-1. This process took quite long. The first units were ready in September. At the same time, Estein was named the head of the newly formed Special Artillery Group. The initial order of nearly 1,000 tanks was canceled and later reissued for 150 medium C-1 tanks in February. The first unit was ready for combat in April 1917. The Schneider CA was designed under Colonel Esting's specifications to carry a 75mm field gun to deal with bunkers, casemates, and other heavy entrenched positions, and softening infantry with machine gun fire from the ball mounts. It has to be fitted with a petrol 80 horsepower engine for a design speed of 9 kilometers per hour, or 5.59 miles an hour. But finally, the Schneider 60 horsepower engine was retained and placed with the radiator at the front. It was based on the well-known American and license-built Baby Holt chassis with the massive bulky hull mounted above. However, the first trials at Sunan in December 1915 quickly showed that the original chassis was far too short and was unable to pass even relatively narrow trenches. To find a better engine and longer tracks, the Holt 75 horsepower engine was chosen instead and the entire plan was redrawn and at the same time production was shifted and reorganized at the Schuma factories near Paris. To keep their hull compact but allow the crossing of trenches, a tail sabot was fitted and a track on the front to crush and cut through barbed wire. The sides were flat, lightly armored, but later protected by a double sandwich plate arrangement. The front was sloped, but not in order to deal with the enemy shells, but to clear the view for the driver in the nose, and secure large openings for the barbette gun. With its tail and angled prow, these tanks superficially look like an armored ship mounted on a caterpillar, as some officers wrote. Joffrey himself, whom authorized 400 to be built, called them land ironclads, a reminder of the popular British demonstrations of 1915. Despite its long tracks, the final CA was very cramped and access through the rear was difficult. Driving was assumed by three forward and one reverse speed gearbox, plus steering differentials on the rear axle linked to the engine 
at the front by a central drive shaft. The first batches of the CA-1s were ready for action on April 16, 1917, just in time for the Nivelle Offensive at Barry Aback. 132 tanks, almost all models then available, were engaged, but the result was a disaster. Many found the rough terrain was too much for their tracks. The engine was not powerful enough for many and broke down at the very beginning. The others advanced in broad daylight and the Germans deployed a lethal artillery barrage and used field guns at short range and direct line firing at the flat trajectories against the tanks which were designed only to sustain machine gun and infantry fire. Eventually the Germans quickly learned to target the exposed forward gasoline reserves and many burst into flames earning the infamous nickname of mobile crematoriums. A total of 57 CA-1s were lost on the first day. 44 broke down at the start and the remainder managed to reach their objectives, breaking through German first and second lines. However, poor coordination meant that the infantry failed to support them and retreated. Only 56 survived. The entire futile offensive was a disaster, and Neville was sacked and replaced by the more cautious Petron. Later on in 1918, available Schneider CAs were reorganized into 20 artillery specialty units and then given to General Esting. They participated in some minor offensives with infantry support, but were progressively phased out to the sole profit of the light FT. As the production ended in August 1918, many retired into training units or used as supply tanks. The 400 originally ordered by General Jaffe were delivered by Schneider, and most later production models were modified following acquiring combat experience. Notably, the high-speed-up gravity-feeding gasoline tanks were moved rearwards, and the armor somewhat increased, overloading even more the engine. The last were unarmed, and the free space was used to storage. They were used to safely supply advanced units in the enemy territory. The frontal rail was usually shortened or even removed. Italy, which was interested, bought a single unit, but after trials preferred the more advanced FT-17. After the end of hostilities, some six were sold to the Spanish and served with colonial forces in Morocco, serving actively against local rebellions until 1926. They were later engaged on the Republican side near Toledo in 1936. They were by then hopelessly outdated. The sole survivor was sent to the U.S. Aberdeen Proving Ground for evaluation and test after the war. It was given back after a 67-year loan and arrived in France in 1985. Specifications Dimensions 6.32 meters by 2.30 meters by 2.05 meters or 20 feet 9 inches by 7 feet 6 inches by 6 feet 9 inches total weight when battle ready was 13.6 tons it was crewed by six people propulsion Snyder four-cylinder petrol 60 horsepower speed 8 kilometers per hour or 5 miles an hour its range was 80 kilometers or 50 miles. Main armament, one Schneider 75 millimeter. Second armament, two Hotchkiss M1914 8 millimeter machine guns. Armor, 11 millimeter plus 5.5 millimeter spaced. Total production, 400 units. Thank you for watching the history of the Schneider CA-1 French tank. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you already did, thank you. Also, special thanks to the Tank Encyclopedia website, and have a nice day.